Um, I have a number of questions and usually I, I go back and forth, but uh, given the room and the fact that we're only two days in the job, I might just go through as many as I can. Um, so, look, there is some worry amongst consumers that um, businesses are in a vulnerable state, and obviously it's incredibly important um, that we support our local businesses by booking where we can um, and by shopping local. And um, I agree with, with the, the previous um, deputy that it's lovely to see businesses start to open up again. So, um, I, I, I wonder, could we look at you know, the issue that consumers need to know the businesses um, are supported by the state and where advanced booking is required are being supported in that manner as much as possible um, and that future support and stimulus packages for businesses you know, are on the horizon um, and that perhaps we should be looking at um, more widespread attention on that issue because we not only need to um, increase business confidence but also consumer confidence in those businesses. Um, as the global recovery picks up, global warming will not be slowing down, unfortunately. Um, Ireland faces emissions challenges, but we now have an opportunity to ensure that our investment strategy supports a just transition, reduces emissions, and rebuilds a fair and circular economy. Has the Minister plans to ensure the most carbon-intensive sectors of our economy, currently or in the future, that might, may be in receipt of public money, will increase their contributions to emission reduction targets? Have we considered strings attached supports that may require emission reduction um, business plans or environmental management strategies or certifications such as ISO 14001, which is very effective in achieving that? Um, we must also ensure that we get those on low incomes back to work as soon as possible and that we are supporting labour intensive work in sectors such and particularly um, the building industry rather than what we have tended to do in recession in the past which is focus on large scale investment projects. In order to facilitate this, we need to ensure we are giving people training in new industries such as renewable energy, installating homes, um, rewilding projects. Property insulating homes will be vital for meeting existing targets um, and is very labour intensive and would also create, create those additional jobs in supply chains and help those most affected by fuel poverty. Um, could the Minister outline his plans to support um, labour intensive um, small and medium enterprise energy retrofitting industry to create jobs in every town and cut fuel poverty and avoid climate change penalties? Um, as you will know, Tanishta, last year the Future Jobs Ireland initiative was published and highlighted the need for our public policy to be directed to the enhancement of the quality of jobs in Ireland as we, we do have a, a high um, level of precarious work um, to allow for a better standard of living. Um, crucial to this would be the need to provide incentives and supports to small and medium enterprise, particularly those businesses who provide local employment um, that that tends to be immune from, to offshoring, and specifically those businesses that pay the living wage. Um, what are the Minister's plans to ensure um, government support will be used to keep the quality of jobs created and retained as a central concern, as any failure to do so may only further the job quality divide in Ireland? Um, Given the potential of both global uh, recession and a rise in protectionism in, that we're starting to see emerge in certain countries, there is a chance that new F, uh, foreign direct investment may reduce and existing foreign direct, direct investment may be scaled back. Um, has the department modelled mo more of a focus on growing indigenous business rather than our, our current reliance on um, foreign direct investments? Um, I just want to talk for a moment about community solidarity, which is, is kind of the, the, the opposite of, of um, foreign direct investment. We have a, a really fantastic, um, we have some, a number of really fantastic businesses in the Dublin Central area, um, and I'm particularly thinking of the moment of um, a zero waste Whole Foods business in Drumcondra in my constituency, um, which has started to help out other adjacent businesses such as cafes and restaurants by allowing those businesses to set up um, kind of concessions on their now emptier premises as uh, the, the COVID requirements are, are forcing businesses to, to kind of space things out a bit more and they're setting up concession stands and helping smaller businesses to do that. Um, it's a small way in which businesses in the community can support each other and it's, it's kind of marvellous to, to watch it happen. I'd ask that the department consider what supports can be offered um, through LEOs, through Microfinance Ireland to such initiatives because as things are changing there is actually a way that or there there may be ways that we can innovate within our, our small um, and medium enterprise sector. Um, 
We are still at an early stage in our recovery um, and indeed in our experience of living with COVID and, and the pandemic and um, operating our economy in that context. Um, we were already grappling with a crisis in the insurance industry, which presents its own challenges to the business sector. Um, could, could we look at, is there a breakout COVID, if there is a breakout COVID cluster in businesses, in cafes or in restaurants, um, what, what is the impact on insurance there? Is there any potential insurance liability for the owner of the establishment? Has the department considered this or how they might support businesses that are um, considering or experiencing that? Um, Irish businesses are struggling with cash flow but the collapse in consumer spending and the resultant cash flow problems this has, um, this has resulted in for businesses were not, all, all, were not the result of instability in our financial system but, uh, or a, a collapse in the property bubble, but rather as a result of the social distancing restrictions, the lockdown, the consequential closing of our retailers and our hospitality business. Over this time, consumers have saved a, a huge amount and, and so th there is capacity within our, our, our financial system there. Um, and we would propose that we take advantage of that situation um, and that we would look to cooperative business models and begin to promote community-based economic organisations. And this, again, speaks to the community solidarity issue that I mentioned earlier. This will not just provide a place for Irish savers to invest their money and Irish employees to take a stake in, in the businesses that they want to hold on to and support. It, it would also provide a new source of financing. Um, the cooperative... Uh, business should be an integral part of rebuilding our economy post-COVID-19. Cooperatives are guided by principles of solidarity and economic democracy and are rooted within their local communities. They're run according to the interest of the members rather than, you know, um, unknown stakeholders. Um, I'd like to ask the, min the Minister how he could develop a supportive financial e uh, ecosystem for cooperatives. Currently, the legal, regulatory, auditing and financial institutions of our economy are designed mostly for private companies and tailored to their needs. And we see that there, there is a, a, an ability to do this better in, in, in economies like the UK, for example. They have um, much clearer supports for cooperative systems. By contrast, um, and as a result, cooperatives operate in this country under a framework that disadvantages advantages of them and is burdening them with a layer of rules and regulations that equivalent conventional firms don't face. Um, is there something we can do to address the competitive disadvantage faced by cooperatives? S um, studies in the UK, where they have a more supportive system, have shown that employees of cooperatives report higher levels of job satisfaction and economic well-being, as well as higher rates of productivity. Compared to conventional businesses, cooperatives also have lower levels of staff turnover, which is a major um, cost for small and medium enterprise, um, and lower rates of pay inequality and lower rates of absenteeism. Um, so can the Minister consider introducing right to own legislation to support employee buy buyouts and the corporatisation of, uh, co of existing businesses? Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Um, Tanish, you may res respond if you wish. Very much. Um, uh, I just want to thank, thank the Deputy for her, her contribution. Just a, a few things that um, I may be able to answer, others I, I'll come back on. Uh, as things stand, when it comes to the grants and loans that are offered, whether it's the Restart Grant or the Wage Subsidy Scheme uh, or the various loans, loan schemes, they're not at the moment tied to any particular uh, environmental uh, obligations or social obligations. That, that may well be the case in the future. We <coughs> might decide down the line not to bail out an industry that's uh, a polluting industry, for example. Uh, but the approach we've taken for the moment really is a blanket approach to try and support every job and support every business um, rather than establishing mechanisms to discriminate between jobs that we want to save and don't or businesses that we want to save and don't. So it has been a blanket approach to date and I think that's been necessary given the blanket impact that the pandemic has had uh, on all sorts of businesses and all sorts of employment. Um, in terms of labour intensive, um, uh, options that, that, that can be considered for the July stimulus. I think the Deputy makes a very, very valid point that we need to consider for, for July uh, putting some government funding and government investment into uh, labour intensive sectors where we can get people back to work quickly. And I agree that retrofit, insulation, rewild, rewilding uh, may be well among those. Uh, even though um, construction is back six weeks, there are still 45,000 construction workers on the pandemic unemployment payment, uh, even though we're told that 80% of sites are now open and there's something not right there, I don't know what it is, um, but certainly we need to uh, dig down into that, get people back on site, and then for those who can't go back to sites for various reasons, provide alternative construction employment. I think retrofit would certainly be uh, top of the list among them. 
Uh, on COVID insurance, I'm not really sure if the issue was whether employers are liable for people who might get COVID on their premises or whether it's around business disruption. Um, all these things have yet to be sorted out in the courts, I suppose, but uh, I wouldn't take the view that a business should be liable for somebody contracting COVID on their premises unless they were somehow um, uh, grossly negligent or responsible for it. You know, nobody's ever successfully, to, uh, to my knowledge, sued uh, a business or, or a crash because their kid got chicken pox or because they got the flu. I don't see why that would apply to uh, uh, this virus, which, which is COVID. Um, but stranger things have happened in, in courts when it comes to compensation claims, I suppose. Um, in terms of business disruption, I think we're going to see that play out uh, with the financial ombudsman and the courts in, in the coming weeks and months. Some businesses arguing that uh, they should be paid for business disruption, uh, other insurers uh, saying that it wasn't covered and that will need to be uh, teased through. Uh, just on cooperatives, finally, um, have been, been to many of them, but not something I know much about in terms of the business model. Uh, and um, I'm not re really au fait as to what competitive disadvantages they face in relation to um, uh, traditional companies, um, but something I, I am keen to find out a bit more about and learn, learn a bit more about. And if there are, are ways to uh, rebalance uh, the system and the law in their favour to give them a fair crack at the whip, I'd be very much open to that. Thank you, Tony.